Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, met at Gudubia Palace today. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting discussed a number of mechanisms to maintain the workflow of various development fields and ways of overcoming challenges imposed by the regional and international economic development. The Royal Highness has confirmed several strategic projects are going to be established in line with the Royal Directives of His Majesty the King in accordance to the government's commitment to its development approach to upgrade the quality of the people's living standards. They highlighted that the government is always keen to adopt policies and strategies that support all elements in relation to progress, especially in the economic and investment fields. The meeting also reviewed related international economic updates in addition to programmes and policies of the government to ensure the continuity of the development process. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Salah, members of the representatives and Shura Councils and senior officials, in which they discussed a number of local and international topics. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the ongoing urban development in the Kingdom reflects an international trust in Bahrain's openness and investment environment. The Prime Minister added that the Kingdom's Development March aims to achieve the aspirations of citizens, noting the government's keenness to implement its development projects in various fields. His Royal Highness called on assessing the economic status in order to overcome all challenges threatening the investment environment. He also noted the government's keenness to support investments in the Kingdom through facilitating the investments process as well as establishing a developed infrastructure. His Royal Highness also praised the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities which aims to achieve aims and aspirations of Bahraini citizens.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabiya Palace today the Qatari ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Saud Al Thani, who presented to His Royal Highness an invitation to attend a ceremony held by the embassy on the occasion of Qatar's National Day. The Prime Minister highlighted Bahraini-Qatari relations and their developments in various fields, expressing satisfaction at the growth of bilateral relations, which was reflected on the level of joint cooperation. His Royal Highness pointed out Qatar's rep rapid urban and civil development, wishing Qatar and its people further progress and prosperity under its wise leadership. For his part, the Qatari ambassador expressed pride in His Royal Highness's keenness to support and reinforce bilateral relations and expand joint cooperation and coordination in all aspects. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudabiya Palace. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The cabinet extended congratulations to His Majesty the King's wise leadership and the people of Bahrain on the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne and National Day. The meeting also noted the importance of Bahrain's Commemoration Day on December 17th, during during which the country will pay tribute to the bravery and sacrifice of the kingdom's martyrs while serving the country. Regarding Bahrain Police Day, the cabinet praised the role and efforts of Bahrain's police officers and their service to the kingdom and its citizens. The cabinet welcomed the recent Paris Agreement, which emphasizes the importance of protecting the environment and supporting economic development. It also praised the outcomes of the 36th GCC summit held recently in Riyadh under the chairmanship of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The summit's outcomes emphasize the importance of further strengthening joint GCC action and support King Salman's vision to further enhance GCC unity. A number of memorandums submitted by ministries and ministerial committees were also discussed during this week's cabinet meeting, including the approval of a memorandum regarding a draft law to issue a list of licenses for public transport activities and permit fees for activities of public transport companies, institutions and individuals. The Cabinet approved a memorandum regarding a MOU between the Government of Bahrain and the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Charity Foundation in the United Arab Emirates related to the establishment of an educational and vocational training institute in the Kingdom. The meeting approved a memorandum regarding the implementation of the recommendations contained in the National Audit Office latest report. It also approved a memorandum regarding the review reports for the year 2015 by the National Authority for Qualifications and Quality Assurance of Education and Vocational Training related to the current situation of education and training institutions in the Kingdom. The meeting reviewed a report by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs related to projects implemented by the Ministry during 2015. The Cabinet also took note of a number of draft proposals by the Representatives' Council. Following the Cabinet meeting, Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs Isa Al Hamadi held a press conference during which he outlined the outcomes of the meeting. The Minister said the Government is fully committed to its firm approach in dealing with the observations and recommendations of the National Audit Office's report. He pointed out that this year's report shows a 38% decrease of violations in comparison to previous years, which reflects the Government's commitment to correct any errors. With regard to reducing expenses, the Minister said the recommendations of the Government task forces can lead to a reduction of recurring expenses from 30 to 35 per cent, stressing that the recommendations are currently being implemented. Minister Al Hamadi pointed out that there are major projects in Bahrain with a net worth of over 32 billion, which will provide more job opportunities to citizens as well as supporting many businesses.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met at Gudabia Palace today the Gulf Cooperation Council's Secretary General, Dr Abdul Latif Al Zayani. The Crown Prince stressed that increased GCC coordination is necessary in light of the challenges currently faced by the region. He added that GCC collaboration is underpinned by the shared priorities of meeting GCC citizens' aspirations and maintaining security and stability within the region. His Royal Highness congratulated Al Zayani and wished him every success following his reappointment as GCC Secretary General. He noted his reappointment demonstrates the significant achievements the GCC Secretariat has made under his leadership and the trust that GCC leaders have in his ability. The Crown Prince was then briefed on the outcomes of the 36th GCC summit that took place recently in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He hailed the role the summit played in strengthening cooperation amongst GCC countries across a range of sectors and emphasised Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in supporting the GCC and its development, which reflects the vision of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness expressed hope for increased GCC integration in the future and noted that the upcoming GCC summit in Bahrain will play a significant role in further reinforcing GCC ties, which is an essential element of tackling regional and international challenges. For his part, the GCC Secretary General emphasised the important role Bahrain plays under the leadership of His Majesty the King in further increasing GCC cooperation. He expressed appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his firm support to GCC integration and collaboration across all levels. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today representatives of sponsoring companies and heads of committees of the Ironman Triple Crown Championship. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's constant support and follow-up of the Ironman Triple Crown Championship, which has resulted in achieving success in hosting such major sporting events by the Kingdom. His Highness also expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his remarkable support, which contributed in organising the event at the highest levels. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his appreciation to the sponsors of the Ironman Championship, which contributed in the successful hosting of the Championship by the Kingdom. He also expressed appreciation to all government bodies who also participated in organising this sporting event.
Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa received the son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, also Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. This came during a ceremony for opening the longest glass tunnel skydiving simulator in the world. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Mr Hash Hisham Al Jauda, and a number of sports fans also attended the event. During the ceremony, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid affirmed the need to support projects aimed at activating tourism in Bahrain, including giving opportunities for different amateurs to practice their activities, as this will have a positive societal impact. Expressing his thanks and appreciation to the leadership for their support, he affirmed that the glass tunnel is one of the best projects that lead to accomplishing a skydiving dream, adding that the project is unique with an inner speed of 290 kilometers per hour and a height of 12 meters. He went on to say that on the occasion of the Kingdom's celebration of National Day, the 16th of December, was selected to be the official day for opening the project. The project manager, Mr Michael Lawson, voiced thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, for his continued support for the project. Also extending thanks to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, he said that Bahrain should be proud of such a project where indoor freefall has become an opportunity and a possibility to practice and enjoy. He went on to say that such an attraction will become a unique entertainment area for all families to come, try and enjoy. The skydiving simulator suits all and allows all ages of amateurs to participate and practice. The venue also features restaurants and coffee shops as well as a multi-purpose hall. The Shiro Council congratulated the wise leadership and the people of Bahrain on the occasion of the Kingdom's celebrations of the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne and National Day. In a statement, the Shiro Council affirmed the celebration is an annual occasion to renew loyalty to the wise leadership and the homeland and to reinforce the spirit of nationalism to push forward the Kingdom's development process. The statement added that the occasion is a good opportunity to recall national accomplishments in all fields that reflect the reinforcement of the role of constitutional institutions and the state of law, in addition to activating the role of civil society institutions, confirming the political rights of women and protecting human rights and freedom of speech, thanks to the reform project of His Majesty the King. The Council also highlighted the Royal Order of marking the 17th of December as Commemoration Day, which is a day to honour the martyrs of the Kingdom and their families for the sacrifices they have made to defend their homeland. Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended today the parade marking Bahrain Police Day, celebrated on December 14th of every year. Also present were Interior Ministry Under Secretary for Nationality, Passport and Residence Affairs, Head of Customs General Inspector, Interior Ministry Under Secretary and Public Security Chief.
The celebration comes in recognition of the tremendous efforts and sacrifices made by Bahraini police in maintaining national security and safety for the people of Bahrain. The Interior Minister offered his best wishes and greetings to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince on the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne and Bahrain's National Day. He also expressed gratitude and appreciation to the constant support provided to Bahrain police by the wise leadership to elevate the security level in all aspects. Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah also expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to the tremendous efforts exerted by policemen in the protection of security and general order.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with his deputy head of the Russian Senate, Mr. Elias Amkhanov. This came within the framework of the official visit by the Foreign Minister to Russia. The two sides reviewed the outstanding relations between Bahrain and Russia and means of bolstering them in political, economic, cultural and security fields. This in addition to discussing the latest regional and international developments as well as issues that of common concern. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed voiced pride and appreciation to the strong relations linking Bahrain and the Russian Federation, affirming Bahrain's keen desire to further enhance such relations for the interest of the two countries and their people. For his part, Mr. Eliam Afkanov praised His Majesty the King's efforts and desire to enhance relations with the Russian Federation, lauding in this regard the role played by Bahrain, both regional and internationally. He affirmed Russia's support for Bahrain and its desire to further develop joint cooperation and expand relations to a wider horizon. He wished Bahrain's king, its government and people further prosperity and development. The two sides asserted on the fact that terrorism is a major danger for security and stability, highlighting the need to continue working against terrorism with all its forms, including fighting Daesh and other terrorist groups. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Patriarchal Church of Antioch in Moscow and other Russian Federation Bishop Nefon Sikali. The church bell rang upon the arrival of the Minister of Foreign Affairs in love and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, where Bishop Nefon expressed his like and appreciation to His Majesty and his prayer for His Majesty's health. During the meeting with the minister, Bishop Nefon highlighted that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has become a civilized model for love, coexistence and religious forgiveness amongst the various religions and faiths. He also made reference to the care and concern His Majesty the King extends to the issue of human rights, religious freedom and freedom of expression. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed voiced pride and appreciation for the noble sentiment of Bishop Nefon towards His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain. He affirmed Bahrain's commitment to further bolster friendship and cooperation amongst different nations within the framework of mutual respect and rejecting all sorts of violence. Nefon Sekhali asked the minister to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and his wishes for Bahrain and its people of further progress and prosperity. Minister of Information Affairs, Shura and Representative Council Affairs, Mr. Isa Abdul Rahman Al Hamadi, conveyed greetings to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, and to the people of Bahrain on the occasion of the National Day celebration and the 16th anniversary for His Majesty's accession of the throne. This came during the opening of the National Day Celebration Festival at Bahrain International Circuit. Mr. Al Hamadi highlighted that the National Day Celebration reflects allegiance to the leadership, the love and belonging to the country and expression of pride for the developments and achievements the Kingdom has accomplished in the various fields. The Minister lauded the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for organising such national festivals at BIC for a third consecutive year. He called upon all citizens and residents to enjoy the celebrations and activities, as well as family entertainment that is happening at Bahrain International Circuit. The Minister stressed the comprehensive media and information plan to highlight technical, cultural and recreational activities marking National Day. He added that such activities reflect pride in economic social and democratic accomplishments during the reign of His Majesty the King. The Minister extended thanks and appreciation to all government and civic bodies for their support for the National Day celebration and the 16th anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne. The National Day celebration at BIC includes activities such as shopping, entertainment activities, go-karting for kids and fireworks that will be held on Wednesday the 16th of December.
Since the beginning of the last century, the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken an interest in supporting women's participation and activating their role in society out of its belief in their effective and essential role in nation building and the march of progress. Bahraini women have achieved many amazing milestones, both regionally and internationally. More now on their success in this report with Sara al -Burek. The development process in the kingdom is based on the efforts of all Bahrainis, men and women. The leadership and the people of Bahrain have repeatedly voiced pride in the Bahraini women competencies who have proven their outstanding capabilities and skills in various fields and reached top leadership and executive positions well deservedly in the kingdom's government and private sector. The main association who has been a hub for achievements of women in Bahrain is the Supreme Council for Women, and 2015 was a tremendous year for them. Highlights were such as the Bahraini Women's Day themed women in the financial and banking sector. Women today in the financial and banking sector are present and present very strongly. They're well educated, they have the proper training, and uh, the regulations, as, as, as far as I'm aware, are helpful. There is nothing that can obstruct her reaching to the top. Uh, this is something available for her. And all that we need to see is that women move from the middle management to the leadership roles. Also the inauguration of an international conference themed Women in Public Life, from policies to impact, which is co-organized by SCW and the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. The journey of uh, a Bahraini woman uh, since the early starts of her education, uh, which goes back to 1928. Uh, so we are really proud of what we discover year after year when we focus on a certain theme and we see um, a lot of accomplishments that women has made so far, uh, in addition to finding some obstacles, in addition to finding some challenges that we would like to uh, overcome and help uh, Bahraini women and their institutions to put the right strategies in order to uh, keep it going and keep the momentum of uh, women in progress in Bahrain. One of Bahrain's national strategies is to empower Bahraini women through well-defined plans and partnerships between the public and private sectors, the civil society institutions and international organizations. The SCW has adopted an approach based on continuous follow-up and assessment of growing social awareness and its impact on communal practice. We are proud that these sectors uh, uh, give us the diversity. Bahraini women uh, comprise uh, 36% in 2014, 2015 they are 35% of the Bahrainis working in this sector and 26% of the total workforce in this sector. So this in its own is evidence of uh, the importance of the Bahraini women's role. Uh, not only that, uh, they have also uh, achieved decision-making positions in the sector and the important thing that uh, there is sustainability. Thanks to their competence and ambitions, Bahraini women today hold high posts in the government and the Council of Representatives and the Shura Council. They have a prominent presence in the interior defense and judicial sectors and enjoy leading positions in the trade and economic fields. This is Sarah Lebrek for Bahrain 55.